today we're going to talk about designing a sustainable system to power California's all-electric high-speed rail trains. Hi, I'm Morgan Galley, and I am the Northern California Deputy Regional Director for the California High-Speed Rail Authority. And I'm joined today by Ryan Scott, the Systems Engineer Manager. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. Can you tell me a little bit about how the high-speed rail system will get power to run it? Yeah, of, of course. It's tra Traditionally, we would take our power from the utilities, from, from the high-voltage uh, network that, in, in, in this case, in Northern California, PG&E uh, runs. Um, that's, that's historically how it's been done. Either, either the railways have generated their own electric uh, in the Northeast Corridor, that happens. They have their own hydro, et cetera or we go out to a utility and hey, say, can we buy electric off you? And they will generate it by whatever means, nuclear, gas, coal, geothermal, et cetera, depending on where you are in the world. Okay. Um, we on California High Speed Rail, that was probably our starting point several years ago. It's we would have went to the utilities and we would have bought energy the same as every other high speed rail does. Um, over the last few years, we've been looking at how can we, A, um, make sure we're 100% renewable, that's one of our requirements. Um, and then B, how can we make it cheaper? Um, so make it more efficient, make, it, make, make the entire system just more economical. So that's really read, led us down the road of uh, potentially looking at how we can use renewable energy, particularly solar in California, because yeah, nice and sunny here, wouldn't necessarily work the same elsewhere. So for example, in, in a lot of Europe, uh, wind is a big part of the mix. Um, um, nuclear and hydro, but here you know, solar is definitely a good opportunity. So for, for California High Speed Rail, we're looking at now developing a system where we can power our trains entirely from solar energy in the Central Valley. How is High Speed Rail going to be able to tap into um, that solar energy? And how is that similar to kind of a home solar um, system? Yeah, it's it is, it's exactly the same as what you'd have at home, just just a lot, lot bigger. Um, so the, the, the panels themselves are very similar. Um, the battery, if you have a battery storage system at home that you use whenever there's an outage, we will propose to have something very similar. Again, just on a, on a much bigger scale. Um, so for example, one of our trains uses somewhere in the region of eight to nine megawatts, which it's a number that doesn't really mean an awful lot. Um, but it, it would effectively be a town of two to three thousand people. That's how much power one of our trains will, will, will use as it moves along the line. So our solar, rather than having the 20 or 30 panels on the roof, we will have several acres of, of solar farms, very similar to what already exists in the valley, but just dedicated for our use. Can you tell me a little bit about some examples of high-speed rail um, systems worldwide that are running on 100% renewable energy? Yeah, the, there are, but probably not the way we're going to do it. Uh, that, that sounds a bit cryptic. There are countries. Tell me more. Who, <laughs> there are countries whose energy mix is very close to being 100% renewable. So just by them going and buying energy off their local grid, it's it's renewable. Um, a good example would be the Netherlands in about 2017 uh, declared that they were running their trains wholly on wind power, and, and that was that was true, um, because they had a contract to buy energy off a wind farm. So that's not to say the whole country was 100% renewable. Um, and obviously, what we're saying is we're buying energy. We're buying energy, but that's it's hard to explain. But that's not saying that that physical piece of energy is moving across the wire to you. What we're saying is in the entire in the entire network, we're making sure a certain amount is renewable. And we're going to go that next step and go, hey, we're actually physically creating renewable energy in this solar panel right next to our railroad. So that is renewable. Mm -hmm. um, we will also connect to, to the grid. Because um, again, you want to have you want to have sort of reassurance that under all these different scenarios, you, you, you can always run trains. So say we're maintaining our solar plant, we want to have the ability to buy some electric from the utility. But again, we can enter into agreements with them that any electricity we do buy is from renewable sources. I want to switch gears to some other partners we have. 
Um, so in Northern California, um, we are planning to operate what we're calling blended uh, operations um, uh, with Caltrain service um, from San Francisco to San Jose. Um, and I know in Southern California, um, there is um, also proposed blended service um, with um, uh, Metrolink. Um, and I'm just wondering if those systems are also electrified, how will high-speed rail and the other systems be kind of working together to provide energy? Yeah, th this, is, this is really where I, I earn my money. This oh. is this is this is my job to make sure that that we um, we interface correctly. We understand what what all the parties need. That, that we build things that are compatible with the different systems. Um, so we're we're obviously a lot further forward in the Northern uh, California corridor, um, working with, with Caltrain. Um, we have a lot of interfacing with them as they've been building out their electrification to make sure that our trains can operate underneath it, both physically, i.e. They'll, they'll fit and the pantographs will run across the wire um, and be able to collect energy, but also that the electrical compatibility will be there. I, our trains are much bigger than theirs. Um, so we need to make sure that we can actually get as much power as we need. Um, obviously we'll be running slower in that corridor, which really helps, but there's, there's just a lot of detail that we've been working through with them over the years. Um, so from a passenger perspective, you will not know that you're on a different system. The, you, you, the train will continue on. There will not be a blip. You will you'll be none the wiser. Um, and that, and they really, that, that shows that we've done our job correctly. And that's a system you were talking about, the wires right now. Yeah. That system, they're building it right now. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, they are. It's And it's going to be, it'll look different from, from uh, you know, if you, if you look out the window or you're driving along, it, it'll look different than what we're going to build in the Central Valley. And mainly that's because to get up to 220 miles an hour, we have to have some special components that you don't need at the speeds that we'll be running on the Caltrain corridor. Uh, but it will it will do the same job. Um, at the end of the day, it's a piece of wire that electricity will run through to get to our train. Um, so it's it, it's obviously it's always hard when you've got projects that are at different stages of development. But really, the key that comes in there is the experience and understanding of the decisions you need to make and at what point. Um, to, to make sure that they're compatible. Great. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time today to talk to me about the electric system of high-speed rail. Um, and we look forward to seeing what you do next. <laughs> Cheers. It's been fun.